one quarter. Come forward, state your name and address to the record. Hi, I'm John Portman, and uh, I live at 6565 Portman Road, and for tonight's subject, it's, uh, my address is Walls at P.O. Box 88, Hey Hira, 31632. So first, I'd like to thank the chairman again for paddling on the chairman and mayor's paddle, and the county manager for coming and seeing us off at Langdale Park. I think y'all notice that's a twisty turn in the river kind of narrow in those spots where you had to pull over logs. And it was only possible to do that paddle at all because we had been in there each weekend for the previous six weeks sawing deadfalls out. Okay, so, um, and, and also uh, the chairman took out at Sugar Creek, which that's the reason there was, you know, you had something you had to get to, so there's a reason we had that takeout. Beyond that, we're actually still doing chainsawing during the paddle. Okay, so, can you all imagine anybody shipping bales of cotton down that river to market? I do not either. Why does that matter? Because the current law on the books in Georgia for what is a navigable stream is basically shipping bales of cotton down the river to market. It doesn't specifically say cotton, but that's the general idea. And why? Because it dates from 1863. Okay. Um, so um, why does that matter? If it's not a navigable stream, in Georgia, the landowners own to the center of the river, which means if somebody owns both sides of the river, they can literally put a fence across it. There's been a test case on a tributary of the Flint where somebody did that and stood up all the way to Georgia Supreme Court. And there's a more recent case on the Flint where somebody said, you know, you can't fish in this area. They won that case, but then I'm not going to go through all the back story. The, there is a, uh, a uh, study committee on uh, navigability and related issues in the Georgia House. They did an hour and a half session with all the back story. I'll send you a link to the video and some other materials. The <coughs> gist is it needs to be defined what streams are navigable in Georgia. Now, two of those mem members of that committee are John Corbett and James Burchett as you know, represent part of Lyons County. And uh, Representative Burchett's solution is he floated the bill in the last session which attempted to name all the navigable stream segments. Okay, an interesting approach. But he included things like the Tallulah River. I don't think anybody ever floated anything through Tallulah Gorge. So the solution to that was to take that out of the list. Okay, if you use that solution, you'd have to take that stretch of the Lithicucci out of the of the list, probably the rest of the Lithicucci, goes downstream from where the Little River comes in uh, back in the late, uh, not long, <coughs> the middle 18th, uh, 18th, 19th century when Troopville was still there. Somebody got the idea of taking a boat from Troopville down to Ellaville on the Swanee to establish commerce. There's a story in the Atlanta Constitution about this. They sold the parts and walked back because Schultz wrecked. So by that 1863 definition, basically none of our rivers would be navigable. So what I would suggest, if you all can see your way clear is, and I'll send you materials and you can find plenty more, is consider suggesting to the state how this delegation we could use a better definition of navigable. Um, you could either write to them, call them, or the committee was gonna have a meeting in the hunt a few weeks ago, got canceled because I discovered there'd been a hurricane. <coughs> They're holding the next one, November 13th, in Munin. It has on the agenda 45 minutes for South Georgia Waterways perspective. So if any of you want to go to Munin, uh, they listen to y'all a lot more than they listen to me, I can tell you that. So that's my subject. I'll be happy to send you more materials. I hope you'll think about it. And if I might add, you know, Walls could use an office. We'd be happy to pay as much as VSU is. <laughs>